Hey guys, Hadouken Dude here. Welcome to the Adobe Flash tutorial. Now, I've been wanting to do this for uh, quite a while, just to show up-and-comers the ropes, so to speak. Um, just show you guys how this program normally works, right? Now, this is basically my main tool that I do when it comes to animating stuff like Four Swordsman's Adventures and uh, other projects as well. Um, everyone has their own methods of animating, so of course I'm just going to show you like the basic stuff that I normally know, so you can get an idea of how the program works. Now, first off, let's just talk about the layout here. Um, as you can see on the right, we have a um, we have a tool layout that's very reminiscent of that um, of a my of what you normally see in Microsoft Paint. Everything from the selection tools, text, uh, lines, rectangles. We got the paintbrush. You get the idea. It's essentially the same thing you see on Microsoft Paint. And of course, you also have your uh, customizable colors here, usually for the outlines and for the fillers, usually like the inside of the um, of the outlines. Different colors, as you can see. Uh, here you have the layer option. This is the program. Th this is the part of the program that's pretty much like the the most demanding, right here. In, in terms of animation. So the layer program pretty much shows you what you currently have on the screen. Right? And this is like the main timeline of the entire animation. Now, of course, you can actually expand it as you can see. Um, regarding the timeline and the layers, as you can see here, you can actually add layers just by inserting frame. Or you can insert uh, something in this frame, and it'll it'll recognize that uh, object, whether it be an audio piece or some kind of an image. It'll just recognize it in its own frame, and we'll try to differentiate it, uh, differentiate it with whatever is added uh, later on in a later frame. So normally, when you see the like uh, a frame up here, if you click insert plain keyframe these two things are completely separate. They're not one one and the same like they used to be. So this is just to separate uh, the frames and not to confuse one thing over the other. Uh, as you can see here, you can actually add or remove layers however you like. Folders, if you want to organize them a lot better. Say, for example, if you want to put this inside this folder, so you won't confuse everything that you're animating with whatever you have outside, like so. So you have like the internal and the external layers, right? Also, very important, you need to know the difference between what's a foreground and what's a background. Of course, the foregrounds are usually represented on the top layer, and the backgrounds are usually represented on the bottom layer. Let's see, there are also um, other windows that are available for um, for uh, custom users. Let's say, for example, the properties, which usually indicates what this, um, what a particular frame or an image usually appears, and just gives you all the all the info regarding it, be it uh, an image, an audio file, a video file, or whatever. I don't usually recommend like importing video files to this because it's it can be a little cumbersome. It's, it's it can be very tricky. Um, there's also the library file, which is the stuff that you normally like import inside the um, the Flash program. Now keep in mind, like in um, let's say for example in Sony Vegas, once you actually import something to a project, it creates more of an ex an external library. This one prefers to include everything inside its own um, inside its own Flash file. Okay, regarding Adobe Flash, there are two types of um, programs, two types of formats that it usually works with. The SWF, which is pretty much like the exported flash file, and the FLA, which usually means like the customizable flash file where you normally like import most of the stuff, be it audio or video, and use it to your own liking. Now regarding importing uh, documents or uh, sorry, documents, importing images and video and audio, as you can see I imported these two images and it's very simple. 
you got two uh, two ways to do it. You can either drag and drop normally, like you would, let's say, an image to um, to a uh, a format in Microsoft Word. It works the same way. Or you can go File, Import to Stage, or Import to Library. The difference between the two is that when you import it to the stage, it's pretty much self-explanatory. It just puts it directly on the screen. Import to Library prefers to insert it in here. That really depends on your um, methods of uh, organizing yourself. Now, once you have uh, imported the files, you normally have like one uh, one of these frames occupied. Let's say, for example, uh, this top one over here, right? And we have this. Uh, this is what's normally known as a sprite sheet, which is a uh, a sheet that pretty much shows like the different cycles of animation. Let's uh, zoom in here. Yes, this is the zoom over here. As you can see, there are many uh, cycles of animation here. By the way, these uh, this is a custom sprite, Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, made by Old School Mario. This I normally get into Spriter's Resource, which is a uh, a popular a, a popular website that has original sprites and custom sprites. And it has its collection of um, of uh, a lot of detail there from uh, from different games. So anyway, regarding ripping sprites from the sheet, which is a method that I normally use a lot. Let me uh, extend it to 200. Okay, let's say for example you want to use one of these walking cycles. First off, you have to pretty much separate the background sheet from what appears with the uh, with the sprites, right? So you normally select Modify, Bitmap, Trace Bitmap, and it gives you these options right here. Color Threshold, Minimum Area, Curve Fit, Corner Threshold. Uh, just to get it uh, ripped properly, it's best to leave it all like this. Color Threshold 1, Minimum Area 1. Curve Fit, Pixels. There are other options too, but this is the, normally the, um, the options I choose. Many Corners, Normal Few Corners. It'll just alter the appearance of the sprite once it's ripped from the um, from the actual image. So it's pretty much like it, it traces the, the entire bitmap and it actually separates the sprites from the background. So if we click OK, it traces the bitmap. Just give it a moment, and that's what the bitmap is supposed to look right now. Now, if you okay, you want to select everything. Let's say, for example, if you want to select the background, it only selects the background, which means you can delete it at your own will. And you can actually select whichever um, walking cycle or whatever animation you want to try out. So let's say, for example, we want to do a walking cycle of, um, let's say, these three over here. It's best to copy. We do this in another frame. Normally, it, it's recommended you do um, insert blank keyframe, not just to separate uh, one frame from another. And of course, you paste the walking cycle, as you can see. Let me zoom in here. As you can see here, this is like a um, a basic walking cycle, a basic animation. Here you have three sprites, and to to actually create that illusion of walking, what we do is a simple copy and paste, or sorry, cut and paste to be precise. So we cut two of the three, insert blank keyframe paste, and of course the cycle repeats itself. And it's all copy and paste for this, uh, with these sprites, as you can see. Another thing I should point out, aside from using the mouse, you can also use the period and the comma to go back and forth just to check out uh, the previous and the following frames. So let's say if I go back, I'm pressing comma here, I'm pressing period, so it just pretty much toggles everything back and forth just to get an idea of how to animate. As you can see. Now let's say, for example, if you want the character to be walking in place. It's like to, to see the walking animation, but without the character constantly like moving from left to right. So in this case, we maintain like the animation from this side. Well, there are 
two options. One, you check out the properties folder, and you look at the um, dimensions of the character, the position and the size over here, which pretty much tells you where it's supposed to be located. The X and the Y, usually like in a, uh, a two-dimensional uh, plane. And of course we have the width and the height. And these are later um, details which usually don't really fit what I'm looking for, but I'm just showing you um, how this normally works. I'm just summarizing it as much as possible. Anyway, regarding this matter, you either have to um, check the position and the size, particularly the, the position, which is usually the X and Y's, or you got another method called the onion skin. The onion skin actually gives you like a transparent page which shows you like the animation movements. You know, like when animators like flick, uh, flip the pages back and forth just to see how the uh, animation um, is supposed to work fluidly. This actually helps in, uh, in that sort of way. Now, of course, you can actually position this and modify it however you like. This part just highlights all the stuff that uh, that's needed for the animation. So let's say this is the the main frame, the starting frame of the um, of the walk cycle. Then you continue with this one, and you continue with this one, correct? So let's say you want to have the character walk in place. We select this one. Try to move this here. Just to get an idea of where the previous frame was. And simply just adjust it to your own liking. Same with the previous. Drag and drop. And adjust how you see fit. So I'm just going here, toggling back and forth, just so you can get an idea of what the illusion looks like of animating. Fairly simple, right? Now there's also something called um, a movie clip. Um, that should be something I should explain later on, but this is mainly for like the um, the basics of how I normally rip sprites and animations. Okay, regarding the backgrounds, before we uh, get to the movie clips and stuff, as you can see, I have the background here. It was imported the same way you would normally import a sprite sheet or an image. Same with an audio. It's all collected in here. So you, all you do is pretty much select a background. Keep in mind, like I said before, foregrounds are up top, backgrounds are on the bottom. Remember that. Separate one thing from another. Now we select, let's say for example, this one over here. Let's put it over here just to separate it from the sprite sheet that appears here. Just drag and drop. And that's your background. Now you can actually customize it however you want. If you, let's say for example, you right click, free transform, you can change the size of the um, of the map that appears in the background. This little circle over here, that um, kind of helps stretch the image and adjust it to, uh, to your own liking. Let's say, for example, if you want to uh, stretch it a certain way, this little circle acts like a little, acts like a rock, like kind of like a, it acts like a paperweight in a sense, where if you put it in one place, it stretches the rest. Also very important, Control Z when using Flash is your best friend. So any little um, adjustment that you made by accident, you can easily correct it by just pressing Control Z. Now, like I was saying, back to the um, movie clip part. Normally when you have a walking cycle, you select the three frames, or the amount of frames, depending on the type of animation or type of walking cycle or whatever it is. You cut the frames, you go insert new symbol, and of course here's where you put the symbol name, Let's say link walk side or left, right, whatever you want to say. And you have these options. Um, we have graphic, button, and movie clip. Um, regarding the movie clip and the graphics, they're they're both essentially the same. But think of it as think of the movie clip as that never-ending animated GIF that just keeps cycling and cycling nonstop, right? The graphic, very similar, but 
uh, the graphic is actually much more controllable. So you can actually see the animation, and you can actually stop it at your own uh, at your own pace. So yeah. And uh, another thing, the button. This is mainly for like action scripting. This is like something a little more advanced that I probably should explain later on. So the button stuff is mainly for like creating. Uh, I would say like DVD menus just to get an idea. But of course, there are other uh, functions for it too, usually for making games. But uh, that's uh, that's another story, probably for another video. So in this case, it's best to choose graphic. Right? Press OK. Now here we have like a separate um, animation layer that's not really interrupting with the actual animation. We paste the frames. Of course, we organize them better. Also, keep in mind, always use this. Uh, this is a zoom tool, the zoom in, the zoom out. So just make sure the animation is right. Keep in mind, the frame rate here is pretty fast. So once you see the frame rate at uh, 25, you can barely see the animation. So regarding the matter, you just have to uh, extend the uh, the length of the frame, just so you can see the actual the the animation be a little more fluent. Also, to complete the actual walking cycle. Just keep in mind, it's one, two, three. And for a basic walking cycle, it's usually one, two, three, two. So, of course, this second frame gets repeated just to complete that, um, that animation cycle. Of course, I have to adjust it a little bit just to, um, just to make it look a little better. Now, let me extend here, insert more frames, double click, and once you actually see like a longer frame in the timeline here, you actually see the animation. And also gives you the opportunity to fix any um, any errors you might see in comparison to the uh, to what you uh, normally trying to fix. Another thing that's very important: if you right click on the screen, it gives you an option here: rulers, grids, guides, snapping. Normally, I choose the grid mainly to create like a, a sort of a base or a platform for the character to walk on. So you can get a better idea of where he's supposed to be standing. So in this case, let's say we want the character to go a little bit downward. You know, just to make the animation look a little more fluid. And not as choppy as it was before. We just organize it a little better. Frame by frame. Now that it's much more organized, since we already have like some kind of a platform to uh, animate the walking cycle, it should look a little more decent. Sometimes it takes a while to get it right, so it's it's okay. It's this is like the kind of thing that you have to learn via trial and error. Once you get everything done right, it's smooth sailing. See, there you go. Link walking. Now we go back to the original scene. Keep in mind that uh, walking cycle that I showed you, it's already been set. Which is right here. Everything is all collected inside that um, inside the library folder, so there's not a problem. So all we have to do is drag and drop. And here we have the sprite. Also, I have my mistake here. Let's use a, a um, let's use another layer that's not really being uh, that's not uh, getting occupied by whatever you see here. Let's just put this on top. Okay, we paste this inside that frame. This in here. 
And if you actually play it, just to show you. See, this was the standard sprite that we had before. This is the animated sprite, with the walking cycle included. And it's all inside this little box. Once you actually press play, you see the character walking. Just showing this you just showing this part quickly so just to get an idea. Um, there's also a very particular method that I use a lot, and it's called uh, tweening. Now, tweening usually means like a um, like the program actually drags an object from one point to another, from point A to point B. So, tweening in this sense would be like uh, let's say for example, if I did this, I placed the character here, and I wanted to move this way, right? I wanted to move in a straight line. So you right click here, so the classic tween, well there's also another option of uh, the, the new tween which is something that's a little different, but I'd stick with um, the classic tween. Anyway, we have a character here, we have a tween, we just need to identify where the, uh, the tween effect is going to take place, like in what part of the page. So of course, let's say for example if we select here, frame 50, Insert keyframe, which is pretty much the same frame, but it's located in a different area. So, of course, frame A is this one, and it's located like in this bottom left corner, near the bottom left corner. And here, we easily drag this to another location, and this is frame B. So, once we actually test it out, you see the character walking from point A to point B, correct? And as you can see, he's walking really fast. That's mainly because of the frame rate, the frames per second. So the, the longer the tween, the slower the character moves, right? The shorter the tween, the faster. So in this case, you have to do like a very slow tweening effect. And also just increase and insert the frames, like so. See, once you actually see the characters moving a lot more smoothly, that's when you got it right. So you see the characters moving in the bottom. The, the sprites moving in the bottom. That's mainly the gist of it um, regarding the animation. Yeah, you can also add audio files, like I said before. Audio files don't normally interfere with the, the current animation, but it's best to separate audio from uh, audio from animations, just not to complicate things any further. So let's say if I wanted to add a, a, an audio file, I would normally just insert it the same way I inserted this thing by going File, Import to Stage. Yeah, it's pretty much like a search bar where you actually search for the I, the item that you need, basically. This is just a basic uh, routine regarding animation. Well, let's try this again a little faster. Let's say, for example, the walking downward animation. Oh, sorry for that. Ah, good thing I just I just reminded myself about something. The layers here also have an option to lock. So, in case if you actually do like a little misstep that I've uh, I've done previously, where I want to select something here, but instead I select the background, it's best that you activate the lock. That way, this remains untouched, while the uh, sprites in the foreground can be used however you want. So in this case, yeah, no mistake, over here. So that way you can't really select the background while you're just editing some of the sprites that appear. So again, let's do this really quickly. Okay, we have these three. We cut, modify, sorry, insert new symbol, graphic. Always important to rename the care them um, to rename the symbols so you won't get confused. We paste. Here are the sprites. We cut, insert point keyframe, paste, 
cut, insert blank keyframe, paste, there we go. Since this is the basic walking cycle, copy and paste the second frame. So remember, one, two, three, and two. So of course we have the regular animation. We just need to readjust it with the onion skin. Also very important that I forgot to mention, when you right click you have two options, paste and paste in place. Paste usually means that it, it uh, pastes directly into the center of the screen, depending on where you're currently zooming. And paste in place will usually mean that, uh, let's say for example, if you have like a frame, just a moment, located here, right? If you copy here and you paste, the, you paste in place, it will usually get stuck in another location where it was prior when it was like in that uh, group. So it's one of those things where you just need to play around with it sometimes. So yeah, that's like the basic gist of it. Also, if you want to center the background here with the actual page, there's this option up here, this little block, that helps make it a lot more transparent. That way you can actually see where the page is actually being uh, being placed, where the, where the map is being placed on the page. Well, let's say the basic methods of how to animate uh, and, and tween. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, my apologies if uh, if I may stutter a little a little more than usual because I'm not really used to this. <laughs> I've had fans uh, actually ask me a lot to, to show them how to animate Flash. Just didn't really have the tools back then, but uh, I hope you managed to understand like the basics of this with this little uh, tutorial. I do plan on making possibly more videos just to explain things in a, little bit, a little, in a little better detail, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, this has been Hadouken Dude. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and uh, take care. See ya.